Okay, so now we're gonna get into nervous tissue. Um, so I'm actually gonna split this one into two videos so that we can um, not have too long of a video, but we're gonna get into neuroglia and neurons. So we'll talk about the different neuroglia, talk about different types of neurons, talk about the basic anatomy of both, and then get into kind of what are these individual parts like of the neuron, like what are they doing, how are they helping? And of course, talk a little bit about certain disorders that are involved with neuroglia or neurons. So we're going to focus on the neuroglia for this video, and then we'll get into the neurons in the next one. Now the neuroglia are basically all of the other cells that are not neurons in the nervous tissue. So they are not going to be sending out signals. They're not what we call excitable. So they're not going to be con you know, conducting any sort of signaling or anything like that in terms of action potentials. Um, so they don't have the same job as a neuron. Their job is to support the neurons. And they can do that in a variety of ways, and we'll talk about that as we go through the different types. Um, but their job, even though they don't, they're not the ones actually sending nervous, you know, nervous impulses, um, they're still vitally important. Without these guys, the neurons would not be able to function. Um, we do see that they are a lot smaller than neurons. Um, and if you think back to anatomy, when you were looking at tissues and whatnot, remember seeing like a spinal smear, there were those huge neurons and then all these little neuroglia around them. So they're smaller, but they're way more abundant, right? You're seeing about, you know, it's like a nine to one ratio roughly, maybe like a 10 to one ratio, where you're seeing for every one neuron, you're seeing 10, you know, nine, 10 plus neur uh, neuroglia in response. Uh, neurons don't necessarily divide, however, neuroglia do. They do multiply, they do divide, they sometimes can even become malignant or cancerous. Um, so you may see things, certain cancers, like when we think brain cancer, a lot of time, you know, in some cases we're talking about neuroglia. And we find six different types. In the central nervous system, we find astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, microglia, and ependymal cells. And in the uh, peripheral nervous system, we only see two. We see Schwann cells and satellite cells. Some of these cells are going to have the same general functions, but they are going to de be different from each other, which is why they have different names. So here's just like our little kind of cheat sheet, right? If you want to pause here just to kind of look through this, this would be a good thing just to look through and get an idea of what each cell does. I'm not going to do that all here because we have a bunch of cell uh, slides where we're going to talk about them, but if you want to pause here and kind of get this information, you totally can. So let's start with our first one and it's the astrocyte. This is a central nervous system neuroglial cell and it has a handful of things it's going to help with. One big thing it's doing is it's going to help form what we call the blood-brain barrier, right? The blood-brain barrier barrier. And so if you look at it, you notice we have these end feet that are associated with the capillaries there. And this is really important because um, we don't, there are certain things that can get through or leak out of capillaries that we don't want to find their way into the central nervous system. So the blood brain barrier on its, on its like baseline level is just, it is an extra filtering process, right? It's an extra way to filter out or, or a more strict filtering system, right? Than other body parts. So that only certain things, things like water can get through, sure. Things like uh, carbon dioxide, oxygen, yes, by all means, right? Glucose, yeah, that's gonna get there too. But other things we don't want to get past to that. And so the blood brain barrier is a more stringent um, filtering basically that we have in the central nervous system. And the astrocytes are helping maintain, they're helping form and maintain that. Um, they're also going to um, help regulate the extracellular fluid, making sure that the, um, that the, the chemistry of that fluid is being maintained properly. It's also gonna help regulate embryonic development of the brain. So that early, early development of the brain early on 
It's going to help influence the synapses, the, the kind of connections between neurons. And then we do see that when someone has a traumatic brain injury, right, for whatever reason, they have had a head injury of some sort, we do see astrocytes kind of multiply way more than normal. They go through what call, what's called hyperproliferation, so we see way more than we would normally see in response to this type of injury. Ependymal cells, these are going to be found in the ventricles in the brain and in the central canal of the spinal cord. These guys are going to help move and produce uh, cerebrospinal fluid. So they're going to make it and they're also going to help it move through, help it flow through the ventricles, right, through these little cilia. So if we look at the picture, right, again, we see all these little hair-like projections. Those are the cilia. They're going to beat in kind of in uh, unison, um, in a pattern to help stimulate the flow of that cerebrospinal fluid to kind of wash it over, right, wash it through those ventricles. Um, it also will help produce that blood-brain barrier, help maintain it. Oligodendrocytes, these guys are going to help form the myelin sheath to help uh, provide insulation around the axons of the neurons. This is going to help speed along any transmission of impulses. Um, and we actually see that the myelin sheath, when it gets destroyed, we have a problem with impulse transmission. And this is a hallmark sign of multiple sclerosis or MS, where the immune system is destroying the myelin sheath or the oligodendrocytes are being destroyed and so they can't produce or maintain that uh, myelin sheath. And so a person with MS would have um, all sorts of issues depending on which part of the brain is being impacted. So issues with speaking, issues with walking, right? Things like that can happen. Each case can be a little bit different depending on where those lesions are found. And then the last one for the neuroglia in the central nervous system is the microglia. These ones are going to be protective. So they are going to be phagocytic, meaning they're going to engulf pathogens, engulf things that are not supposed to be there. Um, these are coming from macrophages from the bone marrow and their whole job is if there is debris, if there are microbes, if there is any sort of damaged tissue that they can remove it. Um, they do play a role in inflammation in the central nervous system when we look at things like multiple sclerosis. I'm not as worried about that though, I'm more worried about you knowing the normal function. Moving on to the peripheral nervous system, we get to our two. We have the satellite cells. Um, these ones are going to be kind of just if you look at them kind of almost like engulfing the cell body, right? They're kind of just glomming onto that cell body. So there's these flat little cells that just kind of surround the cell body and they're gonna help provide support, help with the exchange of nutrients and waste. So they're kind of just helping with the movement of things in and out of the, um, of the neuron. Then the last one is the Schwann cells. These are found only in the peripheral nervous system and they're going to help form the myelin sheath around the axons in the peripheral nervous system. So same job as the oligodendrocytes, just these ones are peripheral and the oligodendrocytes are central, right? And if we take a peek, we do notice they look different, right? So if we're comparing the two, right, here are our Schwann cells, right, kind of wrapped all the way around it, right? Almost like a, like a tortilla, right, kind of wrapped around something like a burrito. And if we look back, right, our oligodendrocytes are the ones here in blue, very different appearance, right, very different appearance. So they're technically not the same. So if you're wondering why do we use different names, they have the same function, but they're not exactly the same cells. So those are our six neuroglia, right? Those are our six neuroglia that we can take a peek at and kind of understand. And you should be able to tell me at least what they do and which part of the central nervous system they're found in.